Hey everybody, it is Poober here for episode 30. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this. So what is all of this stuff exactly? Well, I guess I better start with that. This is the upper right octagon that I installed a couple episodes ago. And if you remember from the last couple of episodes, I actually installed green and red circuit factories to the left octagon over here, which is now fully filled in. But now looking over to the upper right octagon that was previously empty, it is now also filled in, but this time with all of the factories required to make a blue circuit factory at 4,000 blue circuits per minute. The actual blue circuit factory itself is this one over here to the bottom right. And like I mentioned, it can produce 4,000 blue circuits theoretically per minute, assuming we get all throughput of the required materials and assuming we have the demand for it. But to get all of the products I needed for just this one factory, I did need to duplicate additional factories that I've already made in the other octagon. Namely, I needed to add in five green circuit factories. So if you remember, each one of my green circuit factory tiles can produce 14,000 green circuits per minute. Uh, which is just about six fully compressed blue belts worth of green circuits. So each one has six belts. So that is 24 belts of these that go directly into the blue circuit factory. They go from the top over here to the top side of the blue factory. And then we have an additional 12 belts that come from the bottom and go from this side to the bottom of the blue circuit factory. And then I needed an additional red circuit factory as well. So we have the red circuit factory up here to the top. Again, this can produce in this just one tile, 10,000 red circuits per minute. So I believe this factory is actually a little bit overkill for the requirements for the blue circuit factory, but I figured I'd rather be overproducing than underproducing at this point. So this is just another duplicate of the red circuit factory I previously made in last episode. And then of course the red circuit factory needed its own green circuit factory to feed into that. And thankfully it requires just one green circuit factory to feed into the red circuit. So that is why we have five green circuit factories total in this octagon to the one red circuit factory to the one blue circuit factory. So uh, that kind of explains all of the stuff that you can find here in the new octagon. We also have train stackers here this stacker is where we have the copper and iron plate trains come to drop off products for the green circuit factory. It also kind of loops around in this weird configuration. So it uh, comes past here to the upper green circuit factory that feeds into the red circuits, and then it goes back into the main rail network. We also have another train stacker over here for the products needed for the red circuit factory. And then at the very bottom here is where we have a train stacker for things for the blue circuits. So we have the stacker for the actual blue circuit pickup trains. We have stackers for fuel that comes in. And then this one here, I believe, is for the actual red circuits to come in and drop off the red circuits, as well as the acid over here. So with that said, now let's take a closer look at the blue circuit factory itself. So you guys will recognize this as my test world. Of course, this is where I do most of my designing of my factories lately. Uh, this one here in the middle is where I did my first design of the blue circuit factory. I wanted to kind of take uh, inspiration for my green circuit build, which was more square shaped, but ultimately I didn't find a good way of working this out because I realized I needed two belts worth of green circuits coming through. And this configuration only allowed for one full belt of green circuits, which honestly didn't make it very far as you can tell from the compression and this assembler not working very hard at the very end. So at that point I came up with plan B, which was to follow what I kind of had done for my red circuit build. So you might recognize this little configuration here with the beacons around it. This configuration did allow for me to have two belts worth of green circuits coming through. So we've got the one coming through the bottom, another one coming through the top, acid is on the side, and then red circuits through the middle. And then of course our blue circuit output is on the left hand side over here. So I felt like this allowed me for the perfect beacon coverage that I was looking for, as well as all of the compression and throughput that I needed for all of my products. So that's why I took this design and kind of expanded upon it with the next design. And finally, this design here is ultimately the one that I installed in my main base. The only difference is that it's more vertical here instead of horizontal as I've already installed. But just to touch on the production statistics real quick, let's go ahead and open that up. 
So this is where I come up with the 4,000 per minute uh, production rate of the blue circuits. It's holding steady right about at that point, which is, if I've done my math correctly, far exceeding what I need for my end game rocket uh, goal, which is hopefully around five rockets per minute. Um, I still need to play on that a little bit. It's not exactly uh, set in stone. But the point being, I think this should definitely cover it. It's far exceeding any blue circuit production I've ever had. And if you guys actually wanted to expand on this, you could. Uh, looking at the red circuit throughput here, you could see that you could add a couple more rows to this factory because we're definitely good on the red circuit compression still. It can still continue on. My only problem was that at that point, if you continue this on, you are having to go through far more green circuit belts because you need uh, at least one fully compressed blue belt worth of green circuits per row. And at this point, this is already 24 belts worth, so it's really just a matter of whether you can get the throughput of the green circuits to feed this monster. So actually configuring the setup for the blue circuit area in the octagon was a logistical nightmare. Uh, some of you guys did join me for the stream of that, so thanks for joining me for that. It's always fun when you guys do. Uh, but I wanted to start with hopefully just mirroring what I had in the other octagon. So over here to the left hand side, you can see that this is where we have the green circuit build. And I basically just wanted to duplicate that. So I took one massive blueprint of this section and overlaid it over this octagon here. So that's where I came up with this thing here. And I overlaid that, but I found that the orientation of the green circuits being as vertical as they were, um, instead of more horizontal left to right, didn't allow for the right uh, placeholders for the belts going into the blue circuit factory itself. So at that point, I kind of had to completely redo this. So I ripped up everything and then started basically from scratch. Here is the factory about halfway through its installation. Again, this is the green circuit factory over here that still was oriented more vertically and this was before me demolishing this and starting over but you can see the bots working on filling in the blue circuit factory over here the red circuit factory up here to the top and even working on the green circuit factories before i demolished it this was again a logistical nightmare to get figured out uh, but i think i got it to work all in the end between all of these factories it took thousands and thousands of Productivity 3 modules, Speed 3 modules, and even Efficiency 3 modules, which I use in the green circuit build for the copper wire. And between all of those modules, it took hours and hours just to wait for all of those to build up and finally get installed in all of the beacons and assemblers. At this point in the design process, you can see I finally switched the green circuit factories to the more horizontal version as they are now. This allowed me to have more room in the middle for placing down all of the 24 belts that needed to go into the top and bottom of the blue circuit factory over here. This is before though I installed the last green circuit factory that would eventually go up here to the top for the feeding into the red circuit factory over here. And as you can see, none of these factories are turned on. So I still had that left to do. And another thing that I changed between this point and the final point of the blue circuit factory was I originally had bots unbarreling the acid barrels that come in here to these assemblers, but I think with that it would be not quite as efficient and not allow for as much throughput, so I did switch over to the fluid wagons instead. So now you guys are all caught up with the present. I haven't gone any further past this point here, so this is the most current I am in the game. One thing I want to touch on before we move to a new project is just how I did my uh, train networking and conditions. I did have a little bit of help, so credit goes to Rack Fallon who helped me during the stream, which was a very frustrating process, but I think we've got it figured out. So uh, you'll look here at my map if I turn on my train stations that there are quite several uh, red train stations, which means they're turned off. We still have several that are turned on, which are white. Uh, but I had to be a little bit smart about how I went about this because, for instance, with my green circuit factories over here, I have five of them. I wanted to make sure that the train always went to the one that was open instead of just the train station that was closest, which is what they naturally want to do. So to work around that, I have a couple different train condition sets. So we'll head over there so you can see what I'm talking about. So over here at one of the train stops for one of the green circuit factories, 
You'll see here we have the train station with this condition here where it has enable, disable, and read stop train. So if T, which is the signal, is less than one, it outputs a signal of T. And this is basically how it is for all of the train stations or factories that have the same train name, uh, which is usually the case if there is more than one factory or more than one stop. So how I make sure that we still get the trains coming to the stacker if the train is disabled, uh, which we need again to make sure that the train moves on to the station that is open, is I've got this kind of uh, fake train stop here. And I was kind of torn whether to include this as part of my uh, conditions for the train stops or not, but I ultimately decided to go with this design for when I had more than one train stop with the same name uh, with needing to distribute where the train goes in terms of the train station. So I have a train stop here on the same track for copper and for iron right next to each other. And it doesn't matter that uh, these train stops are right next to each other. Again, no train will actually ever come into this stop. How I guarantee that no train will actually come into this weird train stop here is having the signal here uh, just in this block that is set to if anything is greater than or equal to zero, we close the signal. This will always be anything is greater than or equal to zero, which is why this will always stay red, therefore guaranteeing that no train accidentally comes into this stop over here. How this fake train block works though is that we have our station set to the plate. If it's greater than or equal to four, which is how many factories I have going into the blue circuit factory. And it is enabled and slash disabled, meaning when we have greater than or equal to four of my factories uh, that have a train in its stop, then this train station will turn on. What that allows is for the train to continue on into the stacker over here. Once a train leaves the station or opens up, the train will then bypass the system because the fake train stop will be turned off and then it will bypass that and go on to the train station that is actually open. But this allows prevention of uh, weird train pathing and making sure that all of trains go into the correct stacker and that they will always go to the train station that is open. Now that I have all of the circuit components taken care of between green, red, and blue, I don't really have anywhere for those to go yet, so I think the next project will be focusing on making speed one modules and rocket control units, so here is a sneak peek for episode 31 where I'm going to be focusing on that. I am in my test world again, and I wanted to show just what it's like in mostly real time how I go about my building and design process. This is sped up by 300%, but this is me getting a configuration down for the speed one modules that will eventually go into the rocket control units. Here I am getting the configuration I like, kind of in that circular beacon shape that I've been using for the red circuits and the blue circuits. And then eventually just making multiple blueprints and getting the belts lined up how I want to, and then doing a couple different versions of the design until I ultimately find the one I like. Here's me kind of playing around with the underground belts. Eventually I settle on a little bit of a different configuration than how this ends up. Here's me making that copy of the blueprint there and placing it down in just a slightly different configuration. Basically the belts are going from top to bottom, but then I decide to start over. This time the belts are going further uh, on the outside of the assembly machine. Working on the belt balancer there with the splitters and then making sure I have enough inputs with the inserters. At this point, I'm pretty happy with the design, and so I'm just getting it ready for extra blueprinting of it, and then I can begin to duplicate it in a much bigger fashion. There's me adding in the inputs to actually test it out. And then checking the production statistics. I do have a production statistic in mind that I do want to meet. For the Speed 1 modules, I'm trying to aim for a production rate of 
2,551 speed one modules per minute, and that should hopefully get me to the goal of five rockets per minute. There's me duplicating, and now I'm working on the rocket control units. This is me just planning on extending my speed one modules directly into the rocket control unit factory, but it's otherwise still the same overall layout as the speed one modules. For the actual rocket control units themselves, I believe the production rate I'm going to have to look for is 3,571 rocket control units per minute, which is significantly larger than the speed one modules. At this point, this is me testing it out, so you'll have to see how the entire factory turns out by the next episode. Well, I think that is it for episode 30. We're going to go ahead and end it here. For the next live stream, I'm probably going to be making the octagons to fit the new rocket control unit and speed one module factories. So if you'd like to join me for that, go ahead and follow me on Twitch or just look for the alerts that I'm going to be posting on YouTube. But I hope to see you either then for Twitch or for episode 31 coming out very soon.